Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hats here, welcoming you back to look at the history of another iconic character from the world of Street Fighter, and everyone's favourite street fighting schoolgirl, Sakura. Although she wasn't amongst the original cast of characters from the World Warrior, Sakura Kasugano has become one of the most beloved individuals from the entire Street Fighter franchise, and has appeared in almost as many iterations of the game and spin-offs as the big hitters, such as Ryu and old Thunderfies herself, Chun-Li. That's right folks, today we are going to be dusting off that headband and taking a deep dive look at the highly honourable history of Street Fighter's resident juvenile Japanese high school brawler, Sakura. Yeah. The highly anticipated Street Fighter Alpha series, or Zero series if you're Japanese, were games that offered the big wigs over at Capcom a convenient opportunity to finally give the series a much needed shake up, especially in terms of the character roster. Truth be told, as popular as the original World Warrior and many Super Street Fighter 2 editions were, things had become more than a little stale. Like how many times did we want to see most of the same characters and stages? Street Fighter's audience were certainly up for something new. Due to this demand, it was time for Capcom to give the entire franchise a fresh coat of paint, which is where the Alpha series comes into play. The fantastic trilogy of games set chronologically between the events of the 1987 original Street Fighter game and the second World Warrior tournament that takes place in Street Fighter 2. Sakura's character design was created by Akira Yasuda, the same gentleman behind many of the franchise's most famous combatants. The man was not a fan of the roster utilised in the first Alpha game, and wanted cooler, more stylized characters, so would set out to make more memorable additions for Alpha 2. It is of note with the first Alpha game, characters such as E-Honda would be dropped, as younger employees working at Capcom considered him very uncool, which would help explain at least the embarrassingly low views I received on the E-Honda retrospective I created last month. An early design for Sakura featured her in a kimono shirt and hakama pants, but was later abandoned in favour of the iconic Japanese sailor outfit. This look was based on the Japanese schoolgirl superhero archetype that was established by characters in the past such as Sailor Moon, and look that had never been drawn on in the Street Fighter universe in the past. As for this character's roots, Sakura is said to be present during the events of the 87 title, where in this game's violent world, she would be one of the spectators during Ryu's historic tournament final match. Watching the master of her Hadouken face off against Sagat and other tough opponents inspired our plucky young heroine to try and emulate her new hero and master the martial arts herself. In order to achieve her goal, she would look to follow in Ryu's footsteps, so would begin to seek out the man for herself. During this search, she would manage to sort out another person who trained under Ryu's master previously. And no, this was not Ken Masters, but Dan Habiki, a dubious individual who should be no stranger to Street Fighter aficionados. The Mr. Satan-like character whose image is a parody amalgamation of the two playable characters from SNK's Art of Fighting claimed he knew Ryu, and if she trained under him, she would be able to introduce herself to her idol at a later date. If you know your history though, Dan only trained at the Guken Dojo very briefly before being kicked out. So through Dan's lies and exaggerations, it would transpire that although Dan knew some similar techniques to Ryu, it would become clear that he was a bit rubbish really. Going forward, Sakura made it her mission to travel the world to seek out her red head banded hero, as she knew he was the only one that could provide the kind of training and ancient knowledge she felt she needed in her life. During the events of a Street Fighter Alpha game, Sakura would first encounter Ryu, who she would even manage to have a friendly sparring session with and grab a photo opportunity. This initial encounter was fleeting, however, as Ryu refused to take the plucky young whippersnapper under his wing and train her, as he believed he himself still had too much to learn to be able to impart wisdom of his own. 
This, however, only strengthened Sakura's resolve as she then dedicated her life to tracking Ryu down once more. She became determined to have a rematch of their sparring session, and once the stars had aligned for her, she finally got him to agree to be her sensei. And this is how we are reintroduced to her as a playable character in the equally classic Street Fighter Alpha 3. Much of the backstory behind Alpha 2 and the lead up to Alpha 3's events are covered in the two volume manga graphic novel Street Fighter Sakura Gamburu, released between 1996 and 1997, which is actually Sakura's first appearance and is how Japanese fans were introduced to the character. These novels include details of how she formed a sometimes friendship and sometimes rivalry with Karin Kanzuki, and how Ryu ended up saving her from the psycho power wielding Evil and Bison. This was when Ryu agreed to give Sakura the rematch she desired, but sadly still refused to be her trainer. It's also worth noting here that there are now English translations of Sakura Gamburu, readily available which are well worth a look if you're an uber fan. In terms of Sakura's abilities in combat, as mentioned she tries her best to emulate the fighting style of Ryu, but by walking a different path in life, in application her moves lead to her own unique approach of the style she tries her best to imitate. This means she has unorthodox variants of many of the techniques utilised by Ryu and Ken, including a running Shoryuken, a jumping Tatsumaki, and a less powerful Hadouken. Her relatively weak projectiles mean there is little room for error for Sakura when fighting, but her drive, determination, and finesse can make her a devastating fighter at points. Sakura's next Street Fighter appearance would be in the EX Plus Alpha version of Street Fighter EX. To this day, a highly divisive and contentious entry in the franchise. The non-canon EX titles represented a major change in both gameplay and aesthetics, as the tried and tested sprites were replaced by bigger, slower moving polygons, which obviously also affected the pace of the game significantly. For some reason, Sakura was omitted from the roster of any of the EX2 iterations, but made her triumphant return for all subsequent versions of EX3. Good to have you back, young lady. The next canon appearance of the now ever so slightly less young Sakura is several years later in the Street Fighter 4 tournament. Our hero still has the passion to compete the burning within her, and she still wants to track down Ryu. Only this time she wants to track him down so she can actually fight him herself in the tournament. Travelling with her now longtime close friend Dan Habiki and Blanka, of all people, Sakura eventually finds Ryu after the tournament and says her goodbyes. It's here that she realises it's not just she wants to be trained by him, but she has been in love with him all along. Ah. Moving forward, it looked like Sakura would not be appearing in Street Fighter V which would cause a mild bit of uproar. When it was revealed, however, that several seasons worth of new characters would be added to the core roster over the course of a year or two, grubby little fans began salivating in anticipation of their favourite Japanese schoolgirl being made a potential addition, bloody weebs. Luckily, these geeks, I mean fans, were left disappointed, as Sakura was indeed added to the rather bloated roster during the Season 3 update. Now no longer a schoolgirl, our sprightly heroine instead works part-time at an arcade, but longs for more excitement, fireballs and dragon punches in her life. It seems the only way for her to scratch that itch is to enrol in the tournament, so scratch that itch she did. Unsurprisingly, Sakura and Ryu's paths cross again when Karin sends Ryu over to Sakura's house so they can spar. It is around this time that talks between the two lead Sakura to realise that she might not be the dedicated lifetime warrior she once thought she was, and may actually be more interested in starting a family and being a mother. This puts a big question mark on what the future holds for the character. Will she end up married to Ryu? Will Sakura get her heart broken? Only time will tell. Perhaps when Super Hyper Street Fighter 9 Plus EX Alpha Turbo Championship Edition comes out, we will have more concrete answers. 
When it comes to Street Fighter V, the change in Sakura's attire, demeanor and overall personality was met with some backlash from fans when she first appeared in the game. You see, there is generally little in the way of character development in the main Street Fighter roster, despite all of the adventures they go on. Unless of course we are talking about Cody, who has had more face and heel turns than the freaking Big Show. Generally though, most of the time, the cheap filthy buggers show up in exactly the same clothes we saw them wearing in the last game, and that apparently is how most people want it to stay. It seems it will be a while before fans stop associating her with the iconic white and blue schoolgirl outfit. And that rounds up all the mainline Street Fighter games that Sakura has featured in. But if you may be thinking that this is the end of the video, fear not you lucky lucky people, as we are just getting started. She features as both a character and a logo on the instruction interface in the turn-based mobile spin-off game Street Fighter Battle Combination, as well as one of the four selectable characters in the mobile puzzle game Street Fighter Puzzle Spirits. What's interesting here is the four characters in question are Ryu, Chun-Li, Ken and Sakura, so we can really see how popular she has become being in such exclusive and illustrious company. These aren't the only non-fighting games Sakura has appeared in either, as she also showed up in the obscure Japanese-only PlayStation 2 tactical role-playing game Namco Cross Capcom. It's an odd and largely forgotten game in which popular characters from both brands battle it out for some reason or another. I don't know, it's all in Japanese. Three versions of her all redesigned to fit the game's ancient historical aesthetics were included in Onimusha Soul and an unlockable Sakura costume is available in both 2007's We Love Golf on the Wii and in the 2004 PS2 dungeon crawler Crimson Tears. The Japanese love young schoolgirls. Perhaps her most famous appearance of all in non-Street Fighter games was when she made a surprise appearance in the 1997 arcade hit Rival Schools United by Fate, which of course was ported to the original PlayStation the following year. In fact, she was written into the canon of the Rival School story too, although it has never been established in Street Fighter lore which school Sakura attended, so the Rival School's writers were given license to specify that she went to Minami High and was friends with Hanata Wakaba and Natsu Ayuhara from the game. This was obviously not the first or the last time that Capcom would take characters from the Street Fighter universe and put them into other franchises and vice versa. Over the years, Sakura has made many appearances in crossover fighting games, such as Marvel Super Heroes vs Street Fighter, which features her dark alter ego as a secret character, SNK vs Capcom Match of the Millennium on the lowly little Neo Geo Pocket Color, Capcom vs SNK, the chaotic Marvel vs Capcom 2, Capcom vs SNK 2, and the sad state of affairs that was Capcom Fighting Evolution. Ugh. She was also available as downloadable content in a tag team with her hopefully entirely platonic close personal friend and poster boy for jaundice, Blanca, in the highly underrated and highly recommended Street Fighter Cross Tekken. If all of this wasn't enough, a super deformed version of her was also a playable character in the ultra cutesy cartoony Super Gem Fighter Mini Mix, a game that panders far more to a Japanese audience than that of the West. Outside of video games, our Sakura has been a very busy girl as well, with numerous appearances in print and on the small and big screen, with further development of her character and little nuances added to make her more well-rounded and interesting throughout. In addition to the previously mentioned Street Fighter, Sakura Gamburu, two more dedicated Sakura stories were released, in the form of Street Fighter Legend Sakura and Street Fighter Sakura vs Karin, by the highly regarded Canadian company Udon, who went on to make many more of the most popular Street Fighter comics and graphic novels, many of which prominently feature Sakura. In one of their sequels to the original graphic novels, we see that our girl has finally gotten to live out her dream and has become a student of Ryu. Although this came at a price, the Dark Hado had overwhelmed her and Ryu had to save Sakura by absorbing it like the true hero he is. It's a little unclear at this stage how canon that part of Ryu and Sakura's story actually is, so take it with a bit of a grain of salt. But it certainly makes for some interesting reading. The terrifying story of evil Sakura. 
Sakura's animated appearances in Street Fighter based productions were no less frequent, with our girl showing up in the anime movie Alpha the Animation and Alpha Generations. She was also part of Street Fighter 4 The Ties That Bind, in which she helps everyone's favourite long-haired Lothario, Ken Masters, as they search for the missing Ryu. Given the amount of appearances over various mediums in various languages that we've seen Sakura in, it's inevitable that she would have been voiced by many different actors over the years. The only one that has been able to claim any kind of ownership over the role though is Yuko Sasamoto, who has far more of a contribution to the history of the character than anyone else, with credits on nearly all of her video game appearances, right up until the mid 2000s, so excellent work from her. So that just about wraps it up for today, I hope you enjoyed learning all about one of the most beloved characters in the whole Street Fighter franchise, and her honourable fighting history. I look forward to seeing what's next for Sakura in the Street Fighter soap opera, and where her story leads in the eventual Street Fighter 6. If you like this video, why not subscribe and hit that notification bell to be alerted whenever I have a new upload. I would adore your regular viewership. Finally, I would like to give a huge thank you to all of the wonderful people who extract enough pleasure from my work that they have gone the extra mile and even become Patreon backers in the process. So special thank yous go out to Sebastian Velas, A Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heo Paula Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey Imarsh Senior, Capcom vs SNK, Ron Dinched, Evan Boulder, Philip Manth, Azur Archive, Jocquin Varela, Michael Calix, Ago, Jordan Duran, Angel Light 85, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Ted, Gary Pinkett, EC Professor, Johnny Holly, August Piazza, Justin Wang, Hobbes Gonzalez, Instant Gratification Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Michael Hall, Wesley Sang He, Drew Peacock, Langston Miller, Noob, Sarah Powell, Vlaming Renee, Marvin Araliga, TOG Driver, Adrian Hannington, Bernard NG, Dan Van Dammit, Louis Fiant, John Bates, David Bow, Chris Fisk, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Retroversion.com, Casey Wright, Synth Spaces, Punk Toast, Gunther Hendricks, and everybody else who backs the channel on Patreon. Thank you so much for your kind support. <laughs>